your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb and the sleeping child?
Merry Christmas again, and I was going to ask you to thank all of those who provided special music beforehand, so let's do that again to someone in Austin. Thank you. I want to welcome you to this Christmas Eve service for Eastwood's Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us here. We're glad that you are joining us online, or maybe sometime in the future, you may also be watching the service. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. I know that you've come from different places. Some of you are here with family members. Some of you are missing family members right now because they're someplace else. But no matter the circumstances, we're just so glad that you are here. And we look forward to worshiping the Lord together. Christ, the newborn King. Just a couple of items before we start our service. First of all, number one, we're not sure if we will be live on Sunday for worship service. It'll depend on the snow, so keep track of the website, and we'll send out an email. We may be having live worship service, or we may be on Zoom. Just all depends on the snow. Number two, we will have an offering tonight. And if you are a visitor with us, if you're a guest, please don't feel any inclination to give. But for many people... Giving back to God through an offering is a response. It's a way to say, we love you. Thank you for giving us the greatest gift which you have ever given. So just know that. But again, don't feel like you need to do that. And now, I hope that you will enjoy the worship service that we've put together for you. My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. Are you here? Teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight-note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about. Please stand and by your spirit for joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. 
join with me in prayer. Almighty God, your birth brings joy to the world. It brings joy to our lives. And God, we thank you so much that you are here with us this evening. God, I pray that you would speak to us through your Holy Spirit, that you would help us to fully understand the greatest gift that we have ever been given in the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. On this Christmas Eve, we are gathered as God's people to celebrate the coming of the Christ child. We join the Christians all over the world who are celebrating tonight. We light all four Advent candles followed by the Christ candle. We light the candle of hope because of the birth of Jesus. He brought hope into the world. along with a working lighter. We light the candle of peace because Christ is the Prince of Peace. We light the candle of joy because the birth of the Messiah, the Savior of the world, brings joy to our hearts. We light the candle of love because God so loved the world that he gave us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. We light the Christ candle because on this night, the long awaited and foretold Messiah came to save us from our sins. He did not come as a great conqueror or a mighty general, but he came as a baby born to a simple young couple in a remote part of the world. He came to be a servant. Isaiah 7:14 says, "Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel." Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, we thank you for this glorious evening 
on which we are able to remember and celebrate the coming of your Son into the world. Help us to always remember the true meaning of Christmas and to live out your hope, peace, joy, and love in this world. We pray this in the name of the baby who was born for us this night, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is uh, Isaiah 9, 2 to 6, 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Ang mga taong naglalakad sa dilim ay nakakita ng dakilang liwanag. Ang mga tumitira sa lupain ng lilim ay nagkaroon ng liwanag. Isaiah 6. For us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Para sa atin ay ipinanganak at ibinigay ang isang batang lalaki, at ang pagmamahal ilalagay kanyang balika. Siya ay tatawag na kamangha, tagapayo, makapangyarihan Diyos, walang hanggang ama, prinsipe ng kapangyarihan. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Ang kalakihan ng kanyang pagmamahala at ng kapayapaan ay hindi magkakaroon ng wakas. Siya ang maghahari sa upuan ni David at sa kanyang kaharian upang itatag at alalayan ang katakluhan at ng katuwiran mula ngayon hanggang sa magpakailanman. Ito ay magagawa dahil sa pagnanais ng Panginoon. Please stand for O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come,
may be seated. We are here at East West Presbyterian Church on Christmas Eve to see, to ask passers-by what they see as the true meaning of Christmas. Our producers have their own idea, but I think and hope to hear that there are some who still Excuse me. Uh, yes. But do you have a moment to answer a quick question about the holidays? If it's really quick. The public is interested in knowing what do you think is the true meaning of Christmas? Really? I thought the ads would have shown everybody by now. It's presents. Oh, every year I have to get the stores to the stores earlier and earlier after Thanksgiving, but I've been practicing my mixed martial arts so I can be in the first 15 shoppers. But that's just the start. I have to search for deals because there's so much to buy. And then the wrapping, each gift has to be wrapped to be a surprise. And then they're at the last minute sales. I can never buy enough to show how much I love my friends and family. That's why I'm out now on Christmas Eve sales. Some are the best, they, they are the best sales right now. I got distracted last week and found that I had bought uh, several gifts for myself. <laughs> the true meaning of Christmas, it's about finding those perfect gifts for everyone on my list. And, of course, making sure that they know exactly what I want. <laughs> um, but I have to go. The stores will be closing soon. Okay. Oh, look! A 60% off sale! <laughs> well, they were certainly all about getting and giving during the holidays. Oh, but here comes another fellow. Excuse me, excuse me, can I, what? Can I trouble what? you for your what? thoughts on Christmas? Oh, it's the lights! It's all about the lights. Oh, oh. Oh, look at these. Oh, my, my goodness, let me show you. Oh. oh, have you ever seen, have you ever seen a light bill like this? It's, yeah, yeah, it's like, I've got lights from the top of the chimney down to the, down to the basement, and it's like, it's like the sun never sets on our block. <laughs> I know. The neighbors are jealous. I can see it in their eyes when I put up another string of lights. Ah, yes. But then it's time to toss the kids in the car and head out to look at more lights. Not as good, but green, yellow, pink, oh, white. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, I just love them. That's Christmas when you get the lights in there. Oh. We certainly are shown his thoughts on the Christmas season. Oh, Miss, can I interrupt your song for a moment? Oh, yeah, I'd love to share a song with you. Why, that would be lovely. But first, a question. Sure. What do you think is the true meaning of Christmas? Oh, easy. It's the music. It's the music. Don't you love it when the radio stations start playing music in mid-November and then you hear it wherever you shop and when you're at the schools and in your home and all that. And, you know, it just makes me start thinking that it's, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. Oh, it's the music. It's the music. It's songs like Jingle Bells and Santa Claus is Coming to Town and all those great songs, that is the meaning of Christmas, and it's the music of the season. Well, well, thank you for your, well, there you have it. The producers were right, I guess. No one sees the true meaning of Christmas is. I'm sorry, were you talking about the true meaning of Christmas? Yes, I've been asking people what they think the meaning of Christmas is. Well, that, that's easy. Christmas, it, it's about Jesus. Really? Among all the shoppers, the never-ending music, the blinding lights? Well, sure, I see the lights and I hear the music and I give gifts, but the lights remind me of the star that shone over the manger where Jesus was born. I can never look at Christmas lights without thinking even nature paid attention to Jesus' birth. And giving of gifts, well, that makes me think of the Magi and the presents they brought to the king born in Bethlehem so far away from their own home. You know, that complete strangers would give a gift to someone they'd never met, 
gives me a warm feeling when I give gifts to my friends and family. And, and the music, ah, oh, the music, it brings a smile to my face because every time I hear Christmas songs, I think of the angels who sang to shepherds and their sheep. Wow, that first Christmas choir must have been something to write home about, right? <laughs> you know, it seems that everywhere I look, there's something that lets me know that it's all about Jesus. He is the true meaning of Christmas. Well, thank you. Merry Christmas. Well, that is quite the way of putting it. And that tells the skeptics back at the station that we can still see that Jesus is the real meaning of Christmas. The lights, the songs, the presents, they all point to that first most important day when Jesus Christ was born on Christmas morning so that all of us may celebrate Christmas for years to come. With that happy announcement, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Uh, the next scripture reading will be from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38, and chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. <clears throat> In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who will be said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their town to register. So jo Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her, son, her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Embody your spirit, for hark the herald angels sing.
As Pastor Derek mentioned, this is a time for offering, and so I'd ask the ushers to please come forward. And you may be seated. And once again, um, for our members and um, returning guests to um, feel compelled to give, that's great. If you're visiting, please don't feel that. As they come forward, though, I want to offer the blessing before our song tonight. And so if you'll join me in the offertory blessing. Glorious God, we sing with the angels to celebrate the tremendous gift of your son, Jesus. And we rejoice with gladness because you've given us joy and peace in our Savior. Receive these gifts, Lord Jesus, which are offered in the same spirit that the wise men offered gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We come before you in humble gratitude for your gift of life. Take them and us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. 
And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Okay, please stand and body your spirit for the first Noel. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that anyone else was here tonight. My friends and I, we thought we told just about everybody we could about what happened tonight. It's a fantastic story. Let me go get them, and we'll tell you what happened. Guys? Guys? Have you seen my friends? 
Hey, did, did, you, did anybody go by here? Did you see anybody go by here? Guys? Huh, I, I don't know where they are. I'm sorry about that. I, I, maybe I got out in front of them because I was celebrating too much, or maybe Micah passed out again. That could have happened. <laughs> but as we wait for them, I'll just start telling you the story, and, and then they'll probably catch up. Let me start by introducing myself. My name's Zedekiah. How are you? Oh, good. Zedekiah, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Zedekiah, how are you? It's a nice hat. So I've been a shepherd in and around Bethlehem for almost 30 years. Being a shepherd is in my blood. My father was a shepherd. My grandfather was a shepherd. And guess what? My great-grandfather was a shepherd, exactly. And on and on, all the way down to the time of King David. And see, when the nights begin to get warm in late spring, early summer, and our shepherds and I, we take our sheep out into the wilderness nearby so we can keep watch over them at night. And usually it's my friends who come out with me, Boaz and David and Isaac and Jeremiah and Matthew. But for the first time, this time, first time ever, Micah decided to come out with us. Now, people often say to me, don't you get tired of taking your flocks out into the wilderness, keeping watch over your flocks by night. And I don't really get tired of it. And here's the reason why. It's because when us shepherds are in Bethlehem, all the religious Jews and the upper classes, they look down on us because we don't have time to do all of the religious ritual. We want to, but we've got to take care of the sheep. And so because we can't do all the religious ritual, the religious Jews, they really look down on us. Also, if I'm being honest, taking care of sheep, it's a dirty job. <laughs> and the truth is, yeah, I'm a little ripe. We can be a little smelly. And so I get these looks of disapproval. I just don't like getting looked down on. Also, I don't like big cities or the big crowd, or lots of people. And you know what? Bethlehem topped out at just over a 1,000 people last year. That's huge, right? And now there's even more people the last couple weeks in Bethlehem because the great Caesar Augustus, I'm Caesar Augustus, I'm important, I'm powerful, I named a salad after myself. Anyway, the great Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So everybody under his control has to go back to their own hometown so they can pay him tax and do all that. So all the descendants of the great Jewish King David, they came back to Bethlehem. And so the place is packed. And so I don't mind being out camping and cooking and hanging out with my friends out in the fields at night. I especially didn't mind it tonight, because tonight, there are my friends and I sitting around the fire, telling stories, laughing, practicing our slings, when all of a sudden, bam, this white light appears in the sky. It was so amazing, it knocked us all off the rocks that we were sitting on. And when we were able finally to get up and, and shield our eyes and look up, there we saw the most amazing, the most beautiful and terrifying sight that I'd ever seen. There in the night sky, just in front of me, so close in fact that I felt like I could reach out and touch it, was an angel. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen an angel or not. But it was not what I expected. Although to be truth, I'm not really sure what I expected, but I did not expect to be terrified. But when the angel showed up, I was so frightened that I could barely move. I looked around at all my other friends, Matthew, Boaz, David. I saw the fear in their eyes as well, all except for Micah, who was so scared he'd already passed out. I mean, he was out. And 
then the angel looked at us and he said, do not be afraid. <laughs> I thought, it's a little late for that, huh? Especially for Micah, who's out cold. I mean, come on. If you didn't want us to be afraid, maybe you could have shown up with a little less pizzazz. You know what I mean? But after we regained our composure, the angel told me something that I'll never forget. He said that he was bringing us good news of great joy that would be for all people. I got a little curious about this because I, I thought to myself, why would good news of great joy for all people be given to just a shepherd? I mean, we're out in the fields. We're nobodies. Nobody pays attention to us. So why would we get that news? Why wouldn't the news go to a king or noble or someone who got a lot of attention and could spread the news so easily. I mean, I heard about this guy. He's down in Jericho. He's kind of got a weird last name. I think his, weird, his name's something like Kardashian or something. And, and he, gets, he gets all kinds of attention for no reason at all that I can tell. <laughs> so the news could have at least been given to him. But no, it was given to us. But then I was kind of stirred out of my my own head, my own thoughts, because Micah began to wake up. So I went over to, to Micah and I helped pick him up and help support Micah as he was still a little woozy. And then the angel continued. And he said, born this day in the city of David is a savior. He is Christ the Lord. And you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Well, as soon as that angel said manger, all of a sudden there were thousands of angels in the sky. And they all began to sing. It was a glorious sight. It stunned me. It was so amazing that I forgot that I was holding up Micah. And all the angels, the one angel scared him, all the angels floored him again. This time he hit his head pretty hard. And he was out cold. And for another minute or two, the angels continued to sing and praise the Lord. And it was the most beautiful sound that I had ever heard. But then, just as quickly as they came, all of a sudden they left and there was complete silence. There was only the light of the, the campfire and the stars. And I looked around at my other friends and I couldn't even speak, but instead we just kind of looked at each other in the eyes and just kind of was like, did that just happen? Was that for real? Should we have pinched ourselves during that time to make sure it wasn't a dream? And as we were thinking about this, Micah began to wake up again. <laughs> And so this time we all went over to him and we made sure Mike was okay. And he said, what happened? And we told him about the one angel and the good news for everyone. And the Savior has been born. And then we told him about all the angels. And Micah said, are you, are you sure you didn't hit your heads? When we assured him that we had not hit our heads. He said, well, I guess there's only one thing left to do then. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has told us about. And so off we went to Bethlehem, but there's only two problems with that. Number one, as I already told you, there were lots of people in Bethlehem all over the place. The place was crying people. They're all on the streets, and so it was pretty hard to investigate what was happening with all these people around. And number two, all the angel had told us was you'll find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Those are not great coordinates. I mean, with directions like that, I'm surprised the angel even found us out in the field. But still, we decided to go. We thought it weird that the baby Jesus would be put in a manger. We thought he'd be in a house. And so we started going from house to house. And of course, we started in the wealthier section of Bethlehem because the Savior of the world would be born in a majestic splendor. But as we went to house to house, 
People just told us to get lost. They hadn't heard of any baby being born. They told us to go away. Quite frankly, they were rude. We didn't know what else to do, and so we just continued going from house to house, asking if anybody had seen a baby, anybody had heard a baby. But again, people were just rude. They told us to get away. And it was getting late at this point. The streets were actually clearing. It was so late. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this man walking. He was walking with a pot, and it seemed to be steam coming up from the pot like water. And I had a hunch. So I told the other guys, I said, let's follow that guy. And so we followed him for about a half mile until he was almost out of the city when he came to this cave. And from the sounds coming from the cave, it sounded like it kind of doubled as a stable as well. And so the other guys and I, we kind of quietly began to come up to the front of the cave because we didn't want to scare anybody inside, freak anybody out as we had been scared earlier in the night. But as we got close to the cave, all of a sudden, we heard the tiny cry of a baby. And then we just rushed up to the front of the cave. And we got there just in time to see the mother pick up her little baby boy from a manger. And we stared at that baby, and our eyes filled with tears. And I couldn't believe that the Savior of the world could be so small. I couldn't believe that he had such tiny little fingers and that his mother was so young. The man that we had followed to the cave came up to the woman and he put his arm around her. And then they both looked up and they saw all of us staring at them from the front of the cave. And they looked so tired and so weary. But there was also this joy in their eyes. And the man began to speak. But then I just blurted out everything that happened. I told him about being in the fields. I told him about Micah passing out. I told him about, this is going to sound weird, but there were angels. And all of a sudden, he put up his hand. And he just said, I understand. And something inside of me knew that he did understand. And so they invited us in. And we sat in their cave. And he told us their story. And we just stared at the baby the whole time. After what seemed like hours, we decided it, it would be nice if we left this couple alone with their newborn baby. I mean, they just had a baby. And so we decided that we would leave. And the baby was sleeping. And so we decided to go quietly out of the cave as not to wake the baby. But that only lasted about 20 steps or so. We started dancing and singing and praising the Lord because everything was just like the angel told us. We started calling out and celebrating, and the people called down from their windows and from their doors, hey, be quiet down there. We just rushed up to the door and said, we got to tell you this news. And I didn't care. I went up to no doors and windows. I didn't care at all. Because the angel told us what would happen. We saw it with our own eyes. And so the guys and I have been spreading the message since that time tonight. And now that you know the good news, it's also your job to spread it. You need to tell other people, as we have been telling people all night. Because the good news is that the Savior of the world has come into the world. He has come for us all, whether we're shepherds in the fields, whether we're kings, whether we're educated, 
or not. The Savior of the world has come for me and the other guys. Speaking of the other guys, has anybody seen anybody else? Anybody seen Isaac or Jeremiah or Matthew? Guys, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. But now again, you know the good news. You need to tell other people. Hallelujah. 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 Please stand for Oh, come all ye faithful. Please be seated. We come here together tonight from different places, with different thoughts, different feelings on our hearts and our minds. But we come here to worship the newborn king, and we come united with people throughout this entire world whether they speak English or French or German, or I believe the language you heard earlier was Tagalog. Jesus has come for all people. And when Jesus came into the world, he brought the world hope. And we should know that we can't really live without hope, but that Hope is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it also gives us peace. A peace that comes from knowing that we are loved, that our sins are forgiven, that there is grace for all of us. Again, it's in the person of Jesus Christ. And when we have hope and when we have peace, that leads to great joy. A joy that doesn't depend on circumstances or just happiness, but a joy that comes from knowing, again, that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we have hope and peace in the person of Jesus Christ. And the person of Jesus Christ wants us all to know 
that we are loved. So all of that, the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love, it's embodied in the one person of Jesus Christ, the Savior, Christ, the Lord. The light has come into the world. And for over 2,000 years, the darkness has not overcome it. And the darkness will never overcome it. I'm going to invite up the ushers to come forward. I'm going to light my candle off the Christ candle. And as you light your candle, if the person holding the candle, the lit candle, will just hold it up straight, other people can light off that candle. We take the hope, the peace, the love, and the joy from Christ, from this candle. We'll spread it throughout this congregation, but then it's also our job to bring the the good news to other people as well. As we light the candles, we're going to play through the first verse of Silent Night without any words, and then the second time through, we are going to then sing together Silent Night. Would the ushers please come forward? Go ahead and stand as you light your candles. Sleep. 
This light represents the light of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. He's come into the world long ago. He came into the world for you. He knew you would be here tonight singing with your family. He knew you'd be here tonight sitting with your family. And Jesus loves you. And it's our job now to bring his love into this world, which so desperately needs it now. Receive this blessing. May the grace of God, the love of the Father, and the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. I don't know what you're doing tonight or tomorrow, but I hope it's a wonderful night and day. And God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Go in peace.